New tonight, they fought and died for the U.S., but our country never brought them home. Right now, more than 72,000 American service members are still unaccounted for from World War II alone. As Derek Stahl shows us, one Arizona man has spent more than a decade tracking down the remains of men once considered unrecoverable. This mountaineer from Prescott has been making regular trips to the eastern Himalayas since 2002. He says he pays for it almost entirely out of his own pocket. Just last month, the military was able to bury an American airman because of him. And that's just the beginning. To many families, that final farewell means everything. He really was a hero. He's a man Ellen Vinson never knew. He was my mother's sweetheart at Ohio State. But the Florida woman has spent years hoping to find him. They got married three days after Pearl Harbor. Captain John Blackie Porter was a World War II pilot and Vinson's mother's first husband. John Porter was shot down on December 10th. Their second wedding anniversary was in when John Porter died. For nearly 68 years, the location of Captain Porter's crash site was a mystery. That is, until an Arizona adventurer trekked through the jungles lining the eastern Himalayas and found this. Here's one of the propellers. You could feel the spirits of the men there. I'm picturing in my mind what it was like for these guys, what the circumstances were, how terrifying it was for these guys to come down. And I know it sounds weird, but you just, you, you just feel that someone is there saying, Clayton, look here, look here, don't leave yet. You need to check here, flip over here. Finding missing plane crashes is Clayton Cool's passion. You see all these red dots. These are all airplane wrecks that I found. Since 2002, Cools has tracked down and identified 22 missing wrecks near the borders of China, India, and Myanmar. This is a C-46 engine. And we found the serial numbers on the engine, and I'm hopeful that with those numbers we can identify the airplane. He says he decided to go back year after year after attending reunions for World War II survivors. I know this sounds corny, but they reminded me of my dad. My dad was an electrician in Norfolk Navy Yard during World War II. Cools relies on a team of porters to overcome treacherous cliffs, river crossings. This porter slipped off the trail and fell in the river, and he was washed about 100 foot downstream. And crates, cobras, and vipers. To sum up, you know, I don't care how tough you are, it's enough to freak most people out. This area was called the hump route by the World War II pilots who had to fly equipment over the Himalayan peaks to resupply the Chinese in their fight against Japan. Wicked weather made it incredibly dangerous, and historian David Sears says the route earned another nickname. It was called the aluminum trail because if you were flying over the Himalayas on the routes that these planes covered, there were so many crashes that had occurred. You could see wings and fuselages and tail pieces and, and other debris reflecting the sunlight. More than 1,600 airmen were killed on the hump. Cools says he's personally accounted for 193. Thanks to his efforts, some of those airmen have returned home for burial with full military honors. It was the most emotionally powerful experience of my life. When I think back, and I've, I've climbed mountains, I, I've seen people die in front of me, I've almost died a bunch of times. That experience in Petaluma, connecting with that family, to this day, it's the most emotionally powerful experience of my entire life. But many of the crash sites Cools has found need to be excavated by archaeologists to uncover the remains, then undergo DNA testing. And the government has been slow to do the work. When it comes to uh, World War II in Korea and Vietnam, there's a lot of casualties. Vietnam is a, is a conflict closer in time, so there's more political advocacy to have those remains uh, returned to the United States. Among the airmen waiting to return home is a pilot who gained fame for running the military's first ever air search and rescue group, saving 127 people along the way. Honor, and darling, I'm going to run it and make such a name for the outfit that you'll be hearing about it back home. Captain John Blackie Porter was no ordinary pilot. Now he's found, but still unrecovered. Our government doesn't have to go and find the crash site. We know the exact GPS location. We've known for years. We have photographs. We have everything they need. They made the ultimate, 
ultimate sacrifice for our country, the least we can do is to bring them home. Clayton Cools is planning two more trips to search along the hump route this year. He's set up as a nonprofit, and he says with more funding, he's confident he can find more wrecks and bring more American airmen home. If you'd like to help, we've put all the info on azfamily.com. I'm Derek Stahl for Arizona's Family. Absolutely.